Academics, a name synonymous with hip-hop news and often controversial takes, is currently facing some heavy allegations. Just recently, news broke out that DJ Academics is at the center of a legal storm. He's been accused of a very serious crime, alleged hard R at his own home. This isn't just another celebrity scandal. It's a matter that could have serious implications on his career. Y'all all know. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this about everybody in the industry. I'm going to tell y'all all this right now. If I ever goes down, y'all all go down with me. Because I hold no secrets for nobody. Could it be that the exact next day I get hit up by a private investigator that works for Diddy alleging that maybe the same things has happened in five other instances. Could it be? Okay. Well, here's the thing. That, that case went dry. It went cold. We're now talking about Kendrick and Drake. And beyond. Now let's get a bit into the details. Fauzia Abashi claims she was assaulted multiple times at the internet personality's home, first by two men who drugged her, and then by Academics himself. DJ Academics is facing a new lawsuit, accusing him of hard R, sexual assault, and defamation. The lawsuit was filed by Fauzia Zia Abashe, who dated the internet personality, real name Livingston Allen, after meeting him online in 2021. Abashe alleges that on July 16th, 2022, Allen contacted her and invited her to his house in New Jersey, not suspecting any ill intentions, even though they allegedly hadn't seen each other for almost a year. When Abash arrived, however, she was met by two men, identified as John Doe 1 and John Doe 2, whom she did not expect to be there. Abash claims the two men drugged her drink and plied her with alcohol before assaulting and R wording her on Allen's pool deck. Abash says the drugs impacted her memory and caused her to lose consciousness, according to the suit. She claims she was later woken up at around 4 a.m. July 17th, 2022, in a bedroom by Allen, who was pulling her hair, prying open her legs, and brutally R wording her, she claims. I look crazy right now, but I'm not going to stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. That's not what happened, academics. You know that that's not what happened. And for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, that I just went to your house and I'm just some thought, like we didn't know each other for two years. You tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me. Whether or not you got drunk or not, I know that when you woke up, you were on top of me too. You raped me too, and a test, a rape kit was done. You know what? I'm gonna come back with my own story. This is what you wanted, and you're about to get it. I've been quiet for way too long. Abashi accuses Alan of penetrating her button bag and says she was begging him to stop and crying for most of this assault, but losing her ability to move physically. The following day, according to the lawsuit, Abashe asked Alan for details about what happened the previous night. He allegedly showed her a trash can that contained two condom wrappers, which suggested to Abash that, after the alleged pool deck attack, the two John Doe's had taken her into another room in the house and continued to R-word her brutally. Abash also claimed that Alan showed her surveillance footage of the alleged pool deck attack. On a videotape, which... The tape is there. I was happy. I'm a, I probably shouldn't even say it, but I'll say it. I was so happy to provide the tape to the cops. I provided my security guy to decrypt it because they claimed that they were having a hard time to do it. No, we got you. Here's my security guy. Decrypt that bitch. Let him see it. Again. According to text messages included in the lawsuit, later that day on July 17th, Allen told Abashi to get tested and said he would do the same. Abashi said she found the statement odd, and the suit argues that the text was proof that Allen, who had not slept with Ms. Abashi for over a year, 
engaged in unprotected sexual intercourse with her that night. Allen did not reply to a request for comment for this article. After contacting her lawyer for advice, Abash went to the police. The authorities first told her to visit a hospital for a R-word kit, which she did. The kit purportedly led to the discovery of traces of Allen's sperm, she claims. Abash then spoke with the authorities in person, and photographs were taken of bruises on Abash's arm, back, buttocks, and legs. Abash also sat for a recorded wire call with Allen, during which she claimed Allen graphically recounted and admitted to having sexual intercourse with her, even going so far as to describe her vagina. This led the cops to obtain a warrant for the surveillance footage and other evidence. Abash later claimed that Allen disposed of several items, bedsheets, etc., at the dumpster near his office. Presumably, Mr. Allen was attempting to destroy the evidence of Ms. Abash's R-word. Despite taking her allegations to the police, Abasha chose silence, per the lawsuit, and ostensibly decided not to press charges. Her decision to bring the lawsuit comes after the allegations were brought to light at the end of 2023, after both she and Alan addressed the incident on social media. Alan denied assaulting Abash, and in a Deck 30 2023 video, claimed he was asleep at home, while the two John Doe's allegedly assaulted her on the pool deck. Acknowledging the surveillance footage of the alleged attack, Alan said, She was getting trained by my two men's on my pool deck. The suit alleges Alan defamed Abash by accusing her of voluntarily having an orgy with his friends at his home while maintaining that he never participated at all. The suit goes on to allege that Alan knew his statements in the video were misleading and false as he was in possession of text messages from Ms. Abash, where she stated that she did not know what happened to her on July 16, 2022, and that it was Mr. Allen who informed her of the night's events. In a statement, Abash said, I'm confident that justice will prevail, and the veil will be removed, so no other woman will have to endure what I did. Her lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, added, Litigation is always the last resort. After several unsuccessful attempts to privately resolve this case, Ms. Abash was left no choice other than to file. Mr. Allen's hubris will be his downfall. It's crucial to remember that these are, at this point, still allegations. DJ Academics has denied the claims, stating that these accusations are unfounded and that he will fight to prove his innocence. But, what does this mean for his career? DJ Academics has been a polarizing figure, known not just for his music, but for his outspoken and sometimes controversial commentary on hip-hop culture. This isn't the first time he's been in hot water, but these allegations are by far the most serious. In the midst of this, the hip-hop community is buzzing. Social media is ablaze with opinions, some supporting DJ Academics, while others are outraged and demand justice. It's a complex situation, and as fans and observers, it's critical we stay informed and watch closely as the situation unfolds. I'll be keeping an eye on this story and update you with any major developments. It's important that we discuss these issues openly and critically, recognizing the impact they have not only on the individuals directly involved, but also on the culture as a whole. Remember, in situations like these, it's essential to seek the truth and await the outcomes of any legal proceedings. Justice must be served, not just for the individuals involved, but for the community that looks up to figures like DJ Academics. Thanks for tuning in. Stay informed, stay critical, and as always, stay respectful in discussions around sensitive topics like this. Catch you in the next video.